This is the eighth lecture on matrices, and it's on vector subspaces. Now, first off, a definition as always. Uh, now, we define a subspace that if we have a subset of a uh, subset called S uh, of R to the n, the real numbers, it's a it's a vector subspace if it applies to these rules. Now, it wasn't actually too I can't actually find out what a vector subspace is. I know you know it's a subset of a vector space, but there's nothing really. I think it's just like a just a term they use. So the first one is that the zero vector is an element of S. So if you have a vector with a sorry, not a vector, a matrix, the zero matrix is an element of S. So if you have a matrix full of zeros, then it should be in S. Another one, if u and v are both in S, so u and v are both matrices, then u plus v as a matrix should be an element of S. And finally, if u is an element of S as a matrix, then c u is an element of S, where, so c is any multiple, so you can times u by anything and it should work in S. Now, all we have here is just a few examples, and I've put the rules at the bottom here. I'm not sure whether you can read them, because it might be a bit small, but they're there. Right, so we have our first set. So if S is, uh, well, we know it's an R2, because it has two X and Y. So we know that over here it says that X plus Y equals 1. So our first rule of 0 is that uh, zero matrix should fit in. So we have, if we have a zero matrix of zero, zero, zero plus zero equals one, which it does not. So we know zero plus zero equals, does not equal one, so it is not a vector subspace. Uh, next example. It's just the same, but equals zero. So with our zero matrix again, we have zero plus zero does equal zero. So that first rule is true. The next one, if u and v are both elements of s, I've got another thing here. So we have u is x1, x2, because it could be all sorts here, couldn't we? And v is x2, xy, then u plus v is x1 plus x2, y1 plus y2. That makes perfect sense so far, doesn't it? Right, now next we want to see this should fit into here. So we put the x1 plus x2 where the x is and the y1 plus y2 where the y is. So let's just fit them in. So we have x1 plus x2 plus y1 plus y2 equals 0. Now we can collect them. So we can have x1 plus y1 plus x2 plus y2. And obviously we know that because x1 plus y1, because this is, this is an element of x, so this does equal 0, that this equals 0 and this equals 0. So 0 plus 0 equals 0, so the second rule is true. And the third rule is that if we multiply anything by a scalar, so this is pretty straightforward as well, so we have cx plus cy equals 0, so c times x plus y equals 0, so c, and we know this is 0 from up here, so c0 equals 0, so that's pretty straightforward as well. And I think this is our last example, so we have x squared plus y squared equals 0. So, the zero matrix, first of all, uh, zero plus zero does equal zero, so that is true. And next, we want to have two different things that uh, will go in, but by looking, we can see there is only one solution, that x and y are both zero, because there is no other way for two squares to add together to be zero, unless they are both zero because they will always be positive. So, unless we have complex numbers, which we're not using. So, we can say by this, that all these rules are true, and that it is a vector subspace, unlike the previous one. Well, the previous one was, but this one is one as well.